All right. And, and we can see folks in video. So everyone bear with me for a second, because this is my first time doing this. Thankfully, I brought friends who, um, who can help out. Um, Matt is here with me. And Matt is um, one of my friends who has been in the tech world for a long time. And he's helped host these. So he's going to help. And um, he's also a pro when it comes to productivity and working from home, which truthfully, I just put on real people clothes because I knew folks were going to be joining. Um, and Jeremy is also joining. Um, and Jeremy, is, you might know him on the internet as Brunch Boys. Um, and I am sad I don't get to go have brunch with Jeremy. Um, but he is someone who is near and dear to me. And we've talked about mental health. And we've talked about all sorts of stuff. So um, I thought he'd be a good addition. So um, I'm excited folks are here. I, can we... Can we and just bear with us for some of the tech stuff because this is our first time doing this. Um, Matt, anything to add for, for tech logistics as we get started? Yeah, so if anybody is joining us um, on the video uh, or anybody that's just um, attending and wants to see all the faces, um, at the top of the window, there's a, uh, there's a button that might say grid view. Um, uh, if it says speaker view, then you're already in the grid. If you can see that all the faces at once, um, then you're already there. But otherwise, uh, I recommend the grid view so you can see other uh, other faces of the people that are that yeah. are in this. That's great. Oh my goodness, I'm seeing Ms. Klepper, my teacher, my English teacher from high school. <laughs> she so she's on. So you should you should know that you're on mute right now, and everyone is on mute. But you're going to have the ability to. You can have the ability to speak. Um, there's a feature where you can raise your hand, right, Matt? So explain that. Yes, so uh, I'm trying to see if I can actually see it on my end, but somewhere in the chat, there should be a way to, uh, to raise hand. Um, I'm seeing a different screen than everybody else will be though. You don't so. see it, Matt, because we're... Uh, oh yeah, now I see it. So above the chat window, if you click on participants, um, uh, you're gonna see one button that says mute me, and then another button that says raise hand. Um, and so we will have opportunities to toss it out to folks if they want to ask questions. Um, just raise your hand if you want to join and, and ask a question. Otherwise, uh, the chat window is there. You can always drop things in there. And there's the Q&A feature at the bottom too, right? Yeah. Lots of ways you can ask questions. If you want to ask it on camera, you can click the raise hand and we'll put you on, or you can put it in the chat, or you can put it in the Q&A, um, whatever works. So, Lori, awesome. we, uh, you're, we're streaming on Facebook as well. Should we uh, kick this off? Yeah, please. Let's do it. Uh, welcome to my, by the way, I should just say welcome. This is my apartment in New York City. Um, I have been here in quarantine for, I want to say, three weeks. Um, I will, I'll give you guys a little, uh, a quick, um, a quick story of why I'm uh, in quarantine for, three weeks. Um, it's been, it's been a minute. Um, I was exposed. Um, I was at a shoot and I was exposed to someone who tested positive. This was, uh, this was a while ago. Um, and so this was almost before kind of the, this really hit New York. And so the second I found out, I, um, stayed in my apartment and I haven't, I, I stayed for that two weeks and thankfully, um, I'm okay. And, um, and the folks I, I know are okay, but, um, you know, why I wanted to do this tonight is I think, you know, being inside and, and being kind of a, a part of this and now looking at what's happening around the country, around the world, and also here in New York, which is truthfully pretty scary. Um, you know, you think a lot about things like your brain during this time, um, relationships, also productivity. We've now, um, I have a company called dot, dot, dot. We've now had to completely go remote and all these things that I'm facing, I think people around the country are facing. Um, and if you guys know anything about me, I've always been kind of the person who loves to just kind of like throw it out there, uh, and, and open it, uh, open these things up for discussion. So, um, you know, Matt had this idea because he's done this with a, a much more famous country music star who played wonderful music for people, which I cannot do for you guys. Um, but, you know, we thought let's have a, a discussion and people are, um, people who signed up are coming in from all over. So that was the thinking. So welcome to my New York apartment. Um, yeah. 
So we should kick it off. Um, Jack, go ahead. Well, so we don't have any questions yet, but maybe if you guys want to um, talk through like your individual um, expertise for when it comes yeah. to uh, isolation and, and what you guys bring to the table and introduce yourselves a little bit as we uh, gather some questions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you start? Um, yeah I, I can't say that I have a lot of experience with isolation before, so I'll point <laughs> that bit out. But <laughs> Um, but I have been working from home and in a distributed fashion for about three years now. Um, you know, occasionally I would go into New York City. I, I live in Pennsylvania. Um, and so I'd go into the city, you know, once a week or, or less. Um, but most of the time I'm, I'm working from home. Uh, and so most of my experience around this has been, um, uh, you know, working from home. Uh, my day to day is not super different today than it was a few weeks ago in terms of that, but it is in lots of other things. Um, so, you know, I think uh, I'm just here to be able to talk about like what parts are normal, what parts are not normal, uh, and kind of all the ways I screwed up in, uh, you know, how to work from home um, and hopefully maybe learn from those things and, and contribute that to, to everybody else who's kind of going through this for the first time um, or introduced to it for the first time. Um, so yeah, thanks for, thanks for having me, Lori. And I, I want to add when I, I started covering technology, um, over 10 years ago and Matt also known as at MG, right. Um, on, on the internet, which is one of the first people I started following because he has, um, built many companies throughout his career. And so he's just, um, he's an incredible entrepreneur. And, and so, um, I, I trust him with a lot of tech stuff. And one of the coolest things about this this moment has been as we're all kind of grappling with working from home, being able to call on some of the folks I know in tech and in Silicon Valley and watch those people try to help um, and try to kind of put their their heads together. Um, I know tech has we've seen a, a tech lash over the last couple of years. It's been um, pretty incredible to see people like Matt, you know, really trying to help people um, get set up, help kind of with these hacks that they know. Um, so I'm excited to have him here. So uh, Jeremy is diff very different, has a very different expertise. Um, so Jeremy, you want to introduce yourself? Well, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, I mean, yes, in terms of what I do for a living, it's definitely different. I basically ended up used to be a TV producer and I produce all my own content for my Instagram, YouTube, blah, blah, blah. So mostly just producing and editing. But really, I mean, uh, I've been going through the same thing of that. One, I've been working from home for five years now. So I certainly am more adjusted to life like this. Uh, I've definitely been joking that not only that, but as like a total introvert that sort of likes being home alone, uh, my whole life has been leading up to like having expertise <laughs> in what's going on. So I certainly wanted to use my social platform to try and help others uh, on every level on the, like we talked about, so the mental side of it, the productive side of it, the physical side of it, just making sure just even little things like getting up and moving around. Cause if you have a lot of work to do, which I, you know, I'm sure we all do, you could sit at your desk and you start working and it's the end of the day. You're, there's not a lot of things to distract you like at the office where you're getting up and doing this, doing that. Um, so even just going on a walk, you know, little things like that. Now you really, really need are, are critically important. So, is it normal to drink coffee at eight o'clock for, for my, no, is that okay. Okay. I do cool. Bad idea. <laughs> cool. Be up all I'm night killing worrying. it in quarantine guys. In case, in case you guys, I'm killing it in quarantine. Um, okay. I'd love to throw it out there. Um, you know, first of all, maybe we could just like raise our hands. How, how many of you guys are in isolation right now? <laughs> yeah, I think you've got okay. almost, yeah. almost everyone. Um, how many of you guys are dealing with feelings like fear and anxiety? How many of you guys feel like um, this is going to fundamentally change you after this? Maybe, maybe so much, maybe, maybe <laughs> me, but also everyone else and society and everything else. And so I think by extension, me um but that's a really interesting one because you know the, the the whole technology side of this um i can't imagine this happening even 10 years ago and us not having the technology that we do right now 
to do just this. Um, I mean, 10 years ago, we had a really crappy Skype uh, app that maybe we could connect with one person. Um, you know, this, I think, happening today uh, at least gives us an ability to remain social and remain sane, uh, maybe in a way that wasn't really possible before. Yeah. How about, let's, let's open it up to questions. Jack, do you want to? Yeah, so we have our first question, um, and guys, for people that are just Hi, Susan. Joining, <laughs> Sorry, for guys. people that are just joining, um, there should be a Q&A button at the bottom if you'd like to type a question. Um, you can also throw in the chat if you want to ask a question out loud, and we can unmute you um, so that you can ask it yourself. Um, but so this first question is from David, um, and he wants to know, given the, the social isolation that everyone is feeling, why aren't we seeing an uptick in tech with haptic feedback or other ways to feel? For example, a few years ago, there was an artist who made a jacket that hugged you with likes. <laughs> um, so I can kick it off by just saying that I think uh, a lot of that technology is very experimental and isn't probably quite ready for the mainstream, which is probably uh, just in terms of mass producing it and have it, having it be cost effective, which is probably why uh, a lot of that stuff isn't uh, out, out too much. But um, I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on this question as well. Um, I, I mean, I, I think that's, I'll, I'll go really quick to Matt. I think that's actually interesting. Um, and I think what we're going to see after this is, are, really, are tech companies and different companies kind of coming up with um, different products based on this moment. We'll see certain companies, I think, die out and certain companies that were born from this. So, um, man, like, how much is everyone missing, like, being able to hug people? Like, I, I just saw, I, I mean, I'm looking at my English teacher from, like, high school and I just want to hug and like even seeing some familiar faces here like there will be technology that will enable us to do that one day and that's already kind of in development and I think that this moment uh, will be very powerful and potentially accelerating some of that because even when this is done quote done nothing I don't think anything will be the same again I, I think that there will be interesting things um, that will come out of it so sorry Matt go ahead no, I think I think you're right. I think this is going to be an interesting um, interesting time where we are actually disconnected from everybody and finding any way to be more connected. I think is going to be critical. Uh, one thing I will mention is years ago Apple built this into the Apple Watch and no one has used it. Uh, but I just sent my heartbeat to Lori, um, and it's like you just do this thing with the watch and. Uh, I have Lori on here and I'm just pressing two fingers. You can see the little heart pulsing and it is actually like recording my heartbeat and then sending that uh, to Lori. No one uses this thing. So that tech has been around oh, wait, for a no. while. Oh yeah, yeah, I just got it. Yeah. It's different okay. if Lori yeah. had a watch because then she would feel the same thing on her, on her wrist. Um, yeah. But it's just... I don't know. Not everybody's really super into that. I remember yeah. when that came out and like, and there was, isn't there like something where you could like draw and it shows up for them too. And like no one used yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and just to, to throw out some questions to you guys to think about um, if anybody wants to like brave coming in and being on camera and talking to us, like I, I'd be curious to know um, what are you, people are coming in from all around. Like what are you most worried about right now? I know for me, um, I'm sitting in Atlanta. Uh, I'm, I'm sitting in New York and my parents are in Atlanta. My family's in Atlanta. Um, and because I was exposed, I can't go be around them. I mean, this is such a surreal experience, right? To, to think, to even say those words out loud that if I were to go be around someone I love, I could harm them. If you, if you even just say that out loud, it feels like a scary movie, right? Um, and so I, I throw out to you guys, if anyone wants, um, and Jack can kind of facilitate it, I'd be curious. Part of it is I want to hear from you guys about um, what you're most afraid of during this time and what's weighing on, on you guys too. So um, think about that and we'll take more questions. Sure. Can we get Susan? What's up? Possible? Can we, can we bring in Susan? I don't, I don't well, know how to do it. Yeah, yeah. So we have a bunch sure. more. Much more questions in the queue as well. Great, perfect. Uh, so we'll have, do. Let's have Susan ask one out loud. Hold on. Cool. I just, you know, I'm thinking. My concern is that 29% of the American population lives alone, um, more than any other time in uh, our history, and loneliness is an epidemic. And I am fearful from, you know, if this continues for people like that, AKA me. Um, and what has always solved me from my 
loneliness is keeping busy and, and filling my days and nights. I mean, Lori knows that and, 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 and certainly um, your fearless partner does as well. So that, that would be one fear. Um, and I also am concerned about the, you know, the fear that is gonna be in children following something like this. Yeah. A little heavy, um, sorry. <laughs> hey, I mean, oh, I, don't, I don't think so much about this moment is so light. Um, no, 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 no. I no. can I ask you my hair is wet. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, I put on shoes for this. So, like, let's all be clear. Um, how many of you guys are self isolating, like, alone? Yeah. So, um, I, I was thinking about this, um, not to get too honest, uh, but you know, quarantine will do that to you. Um, you know, I, I was thinking a lot about this and, and something, um, you know, there is something, I, I, I think it's got to be hard both ways, right? Um, being in a confined place with a significant other or with kids and all that, but also am I, we're all living out our own story right now. Um, and so self-isolating alone, although I make, I, I like to make jokes at it when I'm stressed and there's a drill outside that I'm like, I'm basically self-isolating with a drill that is the only thing that continues moving in the city. Um, but it really is unique and, and scare and, and, and isolating in a, in a very weird way. And it makes you think a lot. So, um, you know, and then you begin to look at social media and you people, you see people kind of doing their social distancing posts with their families. Um, and, and I think that can also, you know, be, be challenging too. Um, I don't, I, so I, I, you know, I'm very empathetic towards both of those things and hear you, Susan. So. I, I just think that, I mean, in terms of day-to-day -day stuff, I'm someone that, uh, the biggest change has been the two most consistent things I was able to do every day, even though I was in my apartment for most of the day was working out, uh, at the gym in the building, which I can't do anymore. And, uh, just having a lot of work to do, and I just don't have that much work to do. Um, so to me, I'm trying to keep things as consistent as possible. I wake up at 5.30 every morning. Everybody makes fun of me. They're like, why are you waking up? There's nothing to do. But in my brain, I try and set little goals for me to accomplish that day and set little things for me to do and keep myself on a schedule where it doesn't feel like I'm sitting around doing nothing. And it could be a little task. It could be like, I don't know, we all have a little stuff around the apartment or the house we've put off forever. I'm like, oh, those frames I've been wanting to put up. Okay, Tuesday, I'll make sure that's my one thing I will accomplish that day and just setting yourself and giving yourself things to do and just keep your your minds and your body physically mentally going and i think it'll help pass the time and help you get over that loneliness jeremy that's a really really good point i mean uh working from home for this long i can say that uh the most important thing you can do is get a shower in the morning uh it's a really great great place to start as as silly as it is it's something you did before this. It's something you will continue to do after this. But if you wake up and set that intention that, hey, we're going to shower and, and put on clothes and, and have a proper start to the morning, it's a big, uh, it's a really good way to get things going. And, um, you know, trying to maintain any semblance of a routine, uh, you know, my morning is like, you know, wake up, uh, it's totally been blown up lately because I've been sucked into the news and all these things. But generally speaking, it's like, wake up, maybe do some sort of workout, coffee, uh, shower, clothes, like whatever else. And then, and then to work. Um, but even being home all this time and all these years, just that routine is the only thing that can keep you going some days. So it's, it's really critical. Yeah. Let's take a question. Great. Um, so we have a bunch more questions if we want to go through some more. Um, I think this one's particularly interesting. Do you think the open floor plan is over? Um, and that's something I know Lori and Derek, I see in the chat and myself, and anyone who's worked in a newsroom uh, is very familiar with the open floor plan. Um, and then I think, it, and I think that leads to sort of bigger questions of like, what kind of ramifications will this have on uh, just kind of how, how society views a lot of things in general? I don't know. Do we think do we think companies might rethink an open floor plan because of this? I hope it's over. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Um, it's it's an interesting it's an interesting question because I think that it relates directly to, you know, will there be a rise in say distributed work, right? Which is what I've been doing for the last um, for the last three years. And and 
My hope is yes, because I think it's a better way for everyone. You know, you cut out all that commute time. Um, you can, you know, kind of live your own life, get more stuff done. Um, but we're in this sort of like weird state where people are forced into it. Um, and there's, you know, you know, kids at home and there's all these other externalities that were not there on a typical day to day. And Lori's podcast the other day with Mullenweg, he said, this is the boss level of, uh, of working from home. And it's true because under normal circumstances, you would have curated your environment. You would have, you know, kind of set everything up just right. So you're able to work from home and get things focused and done. All that's out the window right now. But I hope that it encourages people to do this more. Uh, and when we do go back to the offices, maybe there's a more healthy boundary created around that. But I also think people might get back in the office and be like, yo, dude, it's so good to see you. And just like have the total opposite effect of just everybody, um, you know, yeah. <laughs> going the opposite direction. Yeah, I, I think it's funny. I was talking to someone who's like a leader of a pretty big company and he was like, this is going to be like a cut out the fat period, right? Which I thought was really interesting. Like, I think, I, I do think um, it could go both ways, right? Where like, when we come back, um, a lot of these things that we tried um, will be instilled in these companies and a lot and, and things won't really be the same um, in any way. You know, we will have all kind of adapted um, to this. You know, I, I think something I think a lot about or that I've been thinking about um, over the last couple weeks of quarantine <laughs> Um, is resilience too, and how resilient we are as human beings, and how adaptable we are. And I think watching that and and, and seeing how that plays into society after that, this um, or as we kind of get through this, will be really interesting too. So, yeah, I think we have we have so many great questions. God, you guys are asking very good questions. Um, we have a smart Zoom town hall. I love it. <laughs> Um, do you guys want me to throw out another one or one do you want to uh, take one? Oh, no, I see this one coming up. <laughs> <laughs> what, this one at the top? Yeah. The tech okay. lash one? We have a question. I think this might have been from Derek. I'm not positive. Uh, I'm curious to know how everyone's relationship to their phone has changed during this isolation. Has the screen time increased slash decreased? And how has that impacted how they feel or how they're coping? Um, and I think this is particularly related to one of our episodes, Lori, um, with Xander, who said that kind mm. of all, all rules about um, how much tech you should, how much tech time you should have during the day are kind of out the window. And people who were trying to limit it, there's kind of, you don't feel bad about it anymore because what else do right. you have? There's no other way to communicate with people. So yeah. I'm going to say for myself that it's absolutely changed how much time I spend on my phone and on screens. Uh, what do you guys think? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. This is a typical week for me. Average of about two hours on my phone every day. Um, if I were to go and look at it uh, today, um, just this week, average of five hours, nine minutes every day. And uh, the biggest things are, if you can see it, Twitter it's just blown up for me. It's almost an hour or more every day. Um, but then other things that are good, like messages, I'm hours and hours, but that's text messaging friends, some, some video time, but yeah, it's changed my, I, I don't know, I changed my relationship, but I've definitely been sucked in way too much. And I, I feel it like I have to force myself to put it down at the end of the evening and just like focus on other things, um, whatever it may be. Cause it's just, uh, frying my brain. Yeah, how many, uh, I'm, well, I'm looking at all of our, our videos. So how many people here think their screen time has gone up? <laughs> yeah, raise your hand. Yeah. Um, have you guys all seen the, the Matrix? How many people here have seen the Matrix? It's okay, some, right? Um, so, you know, it's like this idea of you, you swallow the red pill and you wake up to like the uncomfortable truth. It's like we, when we interviewed someone for our podcast who was in isolation in China, um, this was a, a couple of weeks before it hit the United States. He talked about like this idea of just swallowing the red pill and just going all in. Like we were all told that like we should really put away our screens, that we were all really trying. And I think there's a there's a question about the tech lash that we should answer later from David, who's awesome and he's here. 
Um, but you know, we should, you know, we should really try to put aside our phones and we should really spend time without it. This is like given us permission to just go all in and like our human connection is coming through screens right now. Um, and that's been really interesting, but I do think, and this is what I'm struggling with. Like I am just like connected throughout the day because it's where I get my human connection. Um, and it's also not a hundred percent great. Um, as we've all kind of learned, it's not a hundred percent great for the brain. So like, I think you've got to figure out ways to still put it aside, even though you're not, can't really go out. So it's, it's a, it's a new thing. I, Jeremy, I'd be interested because Jeremy, um, is, has tons and tons of Instagram followers and is, and is well known on the internet in, in many ways. Like, how do you, how do you do it? I mean, have you just... I don't even know. What are you doing? Well, yeah. I mean, my normal time on my phone is a lot anyway. Uh, it's probably <laughs> <laughs> still normally more than most people. Uh, I will say like the biggest change is what's been nice is, I mean, on like Instagram with like 450,000 followers or whatever. And what's nice is really appreciating those people more now. Like I've been going live every single day and I, I put it out there in terms of, I knew how, how I was feeling, which was I'm eating lunch alone. Someone else might be feeling that same way, but I'm used to it. So, hey, why don't you eat lunch with me? And yes, it's different than actually sitting in front of me. But for an hour, I sit there and from people all over the world are sitting there eating their whatever, tuna sandwich, who cares where, where they are chatting with me. And that kind of connection, right? Is it the same connection? No, but it's something I appreciate a little more, which is really cool. Um, and I think, I mean, on every level, I find that I'm calling more people like, my grandfather is 96. I would probably call him, I don't know, every other week. Uh, I'm calling him almost every other day to make sure that he didn't leave the apartments. So I think just it, it changes your views on, uh, on everything. And I think you, it also shows you the people that should be in your life that are close to you that much. I think, hold on, we've been muted. Hold on. Okay, we're back. I think okay. we're back, sorry. <laughs> I think we just missed the last couple words. Uh, yeah, well, that's not, it wasn't that important. <laughs> and Malik just joined. <laughs> I just want to say we have so many great folks um, in here. Yay, hi. Um, we have people from all around too, I, I, which is so cool. And I see some, um, I, think my, I think my aunt is here from California. So not to get really uh, emotional with you guys, but you know, having, um, when you can't be around your family, um, during this, which I'm sure this is such, it's so weird as a journalist, I'll say this, you, you tell other people's stories for a living um, and you interview other people. So um, to interview people and to talk to people and we're all living out the same story and it's fear and anxiety and, and it's changing all this, it's, it's pretty extraordinary um, you know, to, to go through it. So it's very special to be able to see some of my family members or at least they're not on video, but to kind of see their names. So, <laughs> I love you guys. I miss you. I can't hug you because I could hurt you. But welcome to 2020 when things got really weird. Um, so uh, let's, Jack. Do you want to? Do you want to look through some yeah, more questions? Yeah, looking at questions. So um, I think this is uh, something uh, one that's particularly good because um, we talk we talk a lot about working from home, but uh, a lot of people, especially because of the coronavirus, find themselves without work right now. Um, yeah. So this question is, what about people who are isolated or quarantined uh, that are not currently employed? It's a gift to have a job to do all day, but any advice for people who don't have work to do? Um, so I would guess that the routine aspect, and Matt, you can probably speak to this, the routine aspect probably becomes even more important uh, in that case. But if you guys want to throw out any, any tips you have. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'll just say, well, sorry, I'll just say for me, I still have a little bit of work, but it's far less than what I'm used to. Like before where I could spend every week and second working, working like editing emails, whatever, I have very little of it. And again, so I'm going to go back to what I spoke to before is just trying to set certain goals and trying to get things done. Like my, I'm, I'm trying to set goals and accomplish them. So one thing I'm like, okay, I'm going to go 115% on health and work out even harder and eat even healthier to come out of this with this, with some sort of positive, um, trying to learn something. Okay, what can I learn where maybe if you don't have a job now, what could get you a different job or could help you when you go back to work, trying to find skills that way. Just having a goal and attaining it, it's something to do every day if it's not your quote unquote work. Yeah, I'm with you on that, Jeremy. Just having, having a, a sort of north 
uh, just having your compass set and knowing kind of what you want to get out of it, even if you know that, um, you know, so maybe your job will be ready for you when you come back. Maybe it won't. Um, I have to say I'm in an incredibly privileged position. Uh, and so it's uh, with, the, with the job that I'm able to keep um, and keep working. Um, so I can only speak from, say, the experiences of others that I've spoken with so far. But I have one friend who best friend for a long time. He recently um, uh, lost his job and, you know, he's uh, in the process of moving and all these things. So now he's kind of pouring, you know, himself into that as well as, um, you know, trying to stay fit, um, but also exploring, you know, potentially different career opportunities. Um, there's some really interesting models out there. Uh, you know, I know we're all talking on a tech platform right now. I'm a tech worker. So inevitably my brain goes to technology, but there are uh, lots of interesting roles out there these days for people that might be interested in um, getting into tech. Uh, there's even um, kind of schools that are built for this, like um, uh, like Lambda School, um, where you can go and learn, uh, you know, a, a new technology career. Um, but there's, it, it, the biggest thing is like, just put one foot in front of the other every day, get your shower, get your breakfast, like try to set your goal and uh, just don't slip into a, a negative routine. Yeah, I, um, it's hard because I think for me in some capacity, my work is keeping me going, but my work is my passion, right? Um, you know, storytelling is my passion. And if I didn't have a structure around it, I would still want to storytell if that, if that makes any sense. Um, and, and so I think, you know, the one thing that this quarantine and this has, thing has done to me beyond kind of work is, is saying like, there's so many things I said I wanted to do that I just didn't do. Like, um, and, and I think even when it comes to self-care or taking care of myself or slowing down or writing or journaling or doing all these things, and I think it's maybe kind of a good opportunity to even focus on some of those too. And I, and I think um, I've spoken to a lot of people who have said, God, when we're, when I'm out of this, um, I don't even know if I'd want to stay in the same job, you know, I'm going to have different priorities. And so I think it's, it is such a weird thing to kind of like have this moment where we're all kind of looking at ourself, um, and, and trying to understand what we do really want, um, and what is the meaning behind that. And, and when we're able to kind of like emerge, um, you know, what's the kind of person we want to emerge as. So I, I love kind of the tangibles. And then I think the spirituality behind it and, and being able um, you know, to do that. I really like, by the way, I'm looking at this live question over here because I promised as part of this to talk about love. How many people here are in relationships? Okay. So like a handful. <laughs> um, but, um, I'm just going to, I'm going to pivot us really quick to love. And then we, I want to come back and talk about some of the things I, you know, I think it is important. I want us to talk about what it is to be human during this time, because I think this is one of the most human things to happen during our generation. I mean, I can't, you know, and, and then Ed, I, I, I want, I want Ed to talk cause I can see Ed is, has, is itching to say things, but um, this question is who's continued dating, how safely um, someone says they're hosting workshops plus virtual speed dating parties and getting better at dating and finding the person. Um, so are people like, I, so I'm, I'm not in a relationship. And so I, I was thinking about, uh, about this a lot, you know, I mean, how, how are people, I would love to hear from people. Um, so I don't have to just ramble about it. God help me. Um, how are people who aren't in relationships thinking, how's their, how's their thinking changed about finding somebody, um, when you can't actually go out and find somebody, um, at a time when everyone seems to be hunkered down with somebody. Anybody want to answer that one? <laughs> I'll, I'll jump in. I don't. Okay, Jeremy. <laughs> no, it's fine. I don't care. Uh, I think it has changed my perspective. I'm definitely in a person that has always just put off going on a date. and been like, oh, whatever, who cares, and not going on any dates. And now I'm like, well, maybe I should have <laughs> kind of thing. I think, it changed my, I think it changed my perspective on a lot of things of like, I'm someone that puts off a lot of stuff because I just feel like I never have time. And now that I have all the time in the world, I can't do anything. Um, I think that's definitely going to change the way you look at stuff. So whether it's dating or even the, the travel that I put off or, or doing the little things, I think like now is putting all that, all of those things into perspective in terms of actual trying to date. Um, you know, I, 
deleted the dating apps months ago, like one day into this, I was like, I just, I, maybe that's a nice way to, to, ch to talk and you need more people to talk to. Great. I downloaded it and it deleted it after like five minutes. So I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do think that, um, I don't know, it's making me think a little bit more of like, okay, well maybe the people that I have been talking to for months or whatever it is, or the person that I was supposed to go on a date with six months ago and for a reason I said, no, maybe let's talk now. And then maybe we get out of this, I'll feel differently. So I think it's, it's changed my perspective. I'm not the one that's going to do like, Skype dates. I don't want to do that. I don't know. Why not? What's wrong with a Skype date? Well, in terms of dates overall, I've also decided that I really don't want to drink right now. So <laughs> whether Skype date Fair. or date, I feel like I wouldn't want to go on that without alcohol. Yeah, it does feel like we got, who here has watched Love is Blind on Netflix? <laughs> Okay, great. So everyone's Mark. mental health is in check, except for, <laughs> except, for, except for the people that have raised their hands. It does seem like we've gotten kind of like a, a, a love and quarantine thing. Um, there, there's definitely a, a follow-up for love is qu and quarantine. Um, well, we have some, uh, some of the attendees in here that want to jump in and answer some of these. Yeah, please. Um, so I, I, I've, I've simmered on this in the, in the last few weeks. I had two weeks of mourning, and then I started to remember to play again and to dream. And for me, dating got really fun. Dating to find my person got fun. Um, and I've been single for seven plus years. I stopped, I stopped counting at seven. And here are a couple of realizations. So one, Love is Blind, this show on Netflix where you, where these people are put to meeting each other and then proposing and falling in love and proposing to each other without ever having seen each other. And they're talking to each other through these walls almost like they're in quarantine. It's actually hilarious, but they don't see each other's faces. So, so that, that show is taking off. And then I started to realize that people are, before we got into Corona era, people were lonelier than we really realized because how many times, not even just talking about dates, but how many times have we sat in front of our parents or, or a first date or a second date or someone we've been dating for six months or six years and not actually told the truth, asked for the truth, actually see them, actually talk to them, actually, actually, actually make that emotional connection happen. So then in quarantine, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm definitely excited about all my, all my projects, both for official work and not. But one of my non-official projects that's quite official because it's finding my person is dating. So then I started to notice on Tinder that people are saying these funny things like, oh, imagine first dates after we get out of this. What have you been doing in the last three months in quarantine? So that was really depressing. So then I was like, let's play. So, um, so I'm, I'm putting together a, a virtual dating uh, party and a workshop because it's top of my, a workshop with my coach who coaches CEOs and celebs and she's changed my life and I'm doing this thing because I think it's top of mind for everybody. And I totally agree with you, Jeremy, that in my normal life, I have all these things that are on my to-do list I never get to. And just today I had a, okay, so one more thing is that I think that you should give FaceTime dates a chance because, <laughs> because this, we have to slow everything down now and actually get to know each other in order to make that calculated risk to potentially one day meet that person. Or maybe it's tomorrow if, if that person's compelling enough. And so there's a way to do it meaningfully fun and yet in a safe way. And even before quarantine lifestyle, I would screen people on a FaceTime call because why would I go on a date with like even a coffee and spend that time when you could easily get a sense for someone and actually look forward to that first date by just doing a FaceTime. But we're also allergic to calling people and to FaceTiming strangers for some reason. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. I love it. I mean, by the way, Jeremy, do you think that you could find the one in quarantine? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Getting back to the face, something. I mean, yes, part of it is like I just <laughs> That's don't. Called a pivot. <laughs> enjoy that, but uh, eh, you know, I don't know. We'll find. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Open minded. Uh, cool. 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 I love hearing from folks too. So let's keep it up. Uh, yeah. So guys, anyone else who wants to uh, jump in, like you know, raise your hand virtually or physically or put in a message or something, and I'll unmute you. Um, for now, another question that we have in the queue 
Um, would love to hear whether or not anyone believes we will see major changes after this in regards to digital and personal relationships. Do you think more people will be allowed to work remotely? Do you think we'll, anyone we would consider a four day work week? What are the future changes that we see from uh, happening because of all this? Hmm. I do think that there will be the possibility of, of more remote work. Um, you know, I think for a lot of the folks that thought that it wasn't possible, we're living in the experiment right now. Um, there is the opposite side of that, which is that some will have had terrible experiences with that and then force everybody to come into the office. Thankfully, my job is not one of them. We were already semi-prepared and now we'll be more prepared for this. Uh, but I think it will put people into questioning, like, you know, why are we spending all this money on this expensive office space when we were, you know, 80% as productive when we were all remote or things like that. Um, so I think it will have certain impacts like that. But I also have become incredibly cognizant of all the people that can't work from home. Like, I feel super lucky that my job has not skipped a beat. Um, but what about like my friend that was in event production or restaurant workers or hospitality staff or nurses and doctors and uh, first responders and all of these, um, you know, what will things be like for them? Um, regardless, I think there will definitely be some shifts in the way that everybody operates. Well, uh, we have a couple other people who are trying to jump in and ask something. So I'll let them take the floor here either Francis or Drew, I see you're both trying to uh, ask yeah, a question. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lower yeah. This is Francis. Francis? Um, yes. What's yeah, that? I just wanna ask, um, I, have, I have this friend of mine who is actually a disabled person and I've been trying to help him out before this quarantine thing came in. So I just wanted to know I'm just feeling so weird now that maybe you'll be helpless without me, without my support or something. So I just want to know if there's any advice to that. How can I help him without going to his place? You know, you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Where, uh, where are you right now? I'm actually from Africa. I'm calling wow. from Africa. I saw your program on Facebook and wow. I really liked it. So I just want to know if there's any advice for me to help him out. You know, he's kind of disabled. So any advice, please? Um, and, and you can't, can you give us some more details? You can't get over and you can't, um, and, and he's, he's, he's sick right now? Yeah, um, his his actually his his leg is amputated. Yeah. Like he had an accident, and had to work on clutches and that sort of thing. Yeah. But I've been helping him out with his daily and normal house chores, up and downs, errands, and yeah. all those stuffs. Yeah, but I've been doing that before the quarantine period, like I said earlier. Yeah. But since we are all advised to say to stay indoors, yeah, I'm just feeling maybe he'll be helpless without my my support or something. So I just want to yeah. know if there will be there's anything I can do to help him out. Um, you know, I I understand that feeling. I I um, it's so crazy that you can be sitting in. Africa and having this feeling of helplessness. I, um, I today, because I, I was exposed to someone, um, I can't go out and help. Um, you know, I have a 90 year old neighbor from two apartments ago who I just adore. You know, I just, she's just my, um, she's, I'm going to get emotional. She's just like my heart. Um, and she doesn't have food right now. Um, and I had ordered food to her apartment, um, through the internet and I found out today that it didn't come and I called her and, and I said, it's going to come, but they pushed it back to Monday and this and that. And she said, you know, I'm going to go outside. And I, and I just, it was, I, you know, I, I, I was, I didn't know how, um, 
that it's very different. I just didn't know how to help her because I couldn't go be around her because I would put her in danger. And it was this feeling of helplessness. Um, and so something I did was, you know, try to connect with some folks in the neighborhood who I could. Um, you know, I don't know, I'm not a medical person. I don't know the exact advice to give, um, but I can tell you that you're not alone in this feeling and that your friend is lucky to have someone who, um, who cares so much. And I know that, you know, being in touch digitally and calling and, and trying to find people who are close and who can have contact and trying to come up with kind of a plan is, is important. And, uh, you know, and, and just know that um, you're not alone. Like you might be sitting in, in, um, in Africa feeling this feeling. I sat on my couch in New York City today and felt uh, more helpless than I have felt in a really, really long time because I couldn't help someone I loved. So, um, so I appreciate you you talking about it. And I wish I could I wish I could wave a magic wand um, and give you the answer, uh, <laughs> and, and I can't. But you do have um, you know you're. It sounds like you're an incredible friend, and he's lucky to have you in his life. So, Francis, I want to yeah, get so creative for just a moment, yeah. though. Um, Here's do a you tech have, solution. <laughs> Yeah. Do you have, um, do you have a, a digital connection to them? Do you, can you text them just basics? We're starting off here. Come again. I didn't hear what you said. Yeah. Can you text them? Uh, do you have a digital connection or do you not have a digital connection? Yes, yes, with them? Yeah. I do. I do. I do. I do call him okay. all the time, but you know, as, as human beings, you, definitely need some someone to help you since you are disabled you yeah. understand yeah yeah, yeah. So, and and so i've seen uh in the united kingdom there are uh this is where this started i saw that people would put um uh pieces of paper up in their windows and if the paper was green then everything was okay and if they put a red piece of paper up then they needed some help um, in this case, it, it sounds like you're already in touch, so that's less of a of a problem, um, you know. But uh, then you have yeah. cases like um, people who had family in a uh, in say a nursing home where they couldn't have you know that direct physical connection, but they were able to sit outside of a window with them on the phone, and so they were physically present. But then obviously the window between them to protect. But it sounds like there's more physical need um you know are you able would you be able to provide or help um to get things in the market things like that um again trying to take every precaution you can um i think it's going to be the little things you know if you can't physically help um you know move him around and things like that uh, whatever you can do to be present let him know that there's somebody caring the mental component of this is going to be massive too uh, so whatever you can do to contribute in that fashion I think is going to be could, could be helpful is that helpful yeah, thank you thank you very much you have yeah, you have people listen you have people Thanks. all around all around uh the, everyone sending you big big Thanks. hugs from virtual ones not in-person ones so they're safe and corona free <laughs> from all around yeah, so and, we and really and actually, appreciate you coming in actually Actually, it's not only my friend. I, I really pity all those with disabilities out there, you know, um, during this time, they are the ones we, we, we should support most and, and give them and show them that love they need and the caring they deserve, you understand? So I actually pity all of them out there. Well, my prayers to all of them though, although I don't know most of them though, and and I've actually experienced that from a friend I, I told you about earlier. So, so I, I pity all of them. So I guess we should all pray for them to go. Thank you. Thank you so much, Francis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I saw John. Were you raising your hand? Did you want to ask a question? No. Okay, Drew. <laughs> did you have a question you wanted to uh, throw out there? Here, I'm, I'm, I'm unmuting you. Hold on. Yeah, unmute. There we go. Um. Slight reverse, to, you know, you were talking about relationships, and that's why I was trying to look for that raising hand button. The, I was thinking about this today that, you know, 
meeting people online, whether it be through FaceTime or Zoom or however, almost forces certain things that are normally in the equation to be out of the equation, like money and things like that. You know, all of a sudden, it's a very um, more stripped down kind of thing where people are very much focusing on conversation than worrying about the other, I don't know, you can call them superfluous or, you know, you, or you might look at it as, as superfluous, but just some of the other things when you're just trying to get to know somebody via, um, you know, online and meeting somebody, whether it be a date or, or you know, however it is. It, I think it, I really do think that it kind of strips away a lot of these uh, other things and kind of forces a focus on maybe uh, a more important thing to, to concentrate on, like the conversation. I think, I think it's a really good point. I think it's going to be a really interesting, and I'll be curious to see how everyone else feels about it, but I think it's going to be, um, even after this, like it is going to change behavior. I think we did reach a certain point um, where like with the swiping and the every, like there are so many like options. And, and I think, and, and I want to get back to that question about the tech lash too. Like I think there was just so much. And, and I think to a degree, we're almost like very absent when it came to online dating, when it came to just moving so quickly. Um, and so I do think this is going to be really interesting for how we find relationships, the way we begin to talk to people again, whether it's seeing your family again for the first time after this, whether it's going on dates for the first time after this and actually being able to see someone, whether it's connecting with someone on FaceTime and in these weird circumstances where you just have to talk about the most human things, right? Um, but do, but do was, you think it's going to slow people down in that regard? Um, I don't, you know, look, I don't know. People are people, right? Like I, I think from, I can only speak to, to me, myself personally. Right. Well, that's, right? that's what I'm just asking um, for you. And, and so I think for me, um, I think it has certainly um, given me some perspective. I think it has certainly given me a lot of perspective um, and it has slowed me down uh, in a way, um, in, a, in a way that has put a lot into focus. Um, yeah, I think so. A couple of people have mentioned to me over the last couple of days that they expect when this is all over, there's going to be a boom in babies and a boom in divorces. <laughs> You're not the first person to mention that, my friend. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I, I believe, well, I think it's really interesting for people who are um, budding relationships and also people who are in relationships. I mean, this is like, this is like, as we said, for working from home, it's like boss level mode. It's like, if you're about to be in a relationship, it's like make or break it because these are the most stressful circumstances. And if you're in a relationship, it's like, you got to relearn each other in these crazy situations. So I, I think it, you know, you, I don't know. I mean, I'm certainly no expert on it as I am self-isolating alone. So I will let someone else answer some questions. <laughs> Even outside of just direct, you know, one to one relationships, though, I think already in the last week, I've probably spent more time on the phone and FaceTime and this app house party where people can kind of do video chat and, and seen folks and talk to the folks that I haven't seen in years. And to me, like, I want to capture that and take it into wherever we go from here, just because I think that I've missed so many people and it's so easy to just get pulled into your day to day and, and, and stay on that rail and not diverge from it um, and lose a lot of touch with a lot of people. Um, I just saw one of my, my best buddy, Jordan just joined and, and he and I have probably spent hours on the phone over the last week and we get to talk, a, you know, a relatively good amount, but it's been awesome just to be able to have that much more time. Um, so I, I hope that, I hope that we, take stock in what that has been like um, and keep that going after this. Um, I know, Malik, you said you wanted to, it, can we unmute Malik? Do you want to raise your hand? So I know you said you wanted to ask something on mental health. Who yeah. are, oh, Malik, yes. Yeah. Uh, you should be good now. Hi, yeah. Um, I had something to say though, and actually in relation to that kind of. Um, so I was hit by a car toward the end of not this past summer, but the summer before that, I think. Um, it's so we it's so weird the timing of that, but I had to take a year off from school. 
Um, and I think that that really was almost like, if I hadn't had that, I would be losing my mind right now. Um, because I think that it really allowed me to have like, to learn what it is to sort of slow down and to be forced physically to slow down. And I think that this is a very rapid uprooting of a lot of people's lives. And I think that this will be, if you have never had like a medical leave or something like that, this is going to be that for a lot of people. Um, and then in regards to like mental health, I wanted to jump in there because I think that th this is gonna like, if you've never had an experience that has forced you to slow down and you all of a sudden have to and the world just sort of stops, I worry about people that are like addicted to things and just have a very like unhealthy relationship with something um, and maybe not being able to access that or are just like in college and a lot of people lost their housing. And so I'm thinking a lot of like weird things that are really personal and human and I feel like for example, like me, I wanted to mention about OCD, which I have. And if you have seen New York stores, there's no more hand sanitizer. <laughs> it's like gone off the face of the earth. Um, and I did not prep for that because this is New York and you would think that you would have all the resources you would ever need in New York City. Um, and for me, it's been a really interesting thing of, of like, feeling disgusting no matter how many times I shower and no, many, no matter how many times I like wash my hands. Um, and then of course, all of those like obsessions and compulsions are like in the news now. So you're, every time you turn on your phone or social media, you're seeing those things happening and you're seeing the messages to continue to clean yourself. Um, and so I think that it, it's definitely gonna change me with OCD, I think, because this has been like I had therapy when I was on my leave and this is like massive exposure therapy for me and forced exposure therapy, um, which is kind of helpful, but I feel like you should be guided through that. It shouldn't be so um, weird and <laughs> like the way it's happening. But um, I think there are a lot of things, like I just, I wonder about people who are like addicted to alcohol who may not have any more alcohol in their house and don't want to go outside or something along those lines. So I just, I feel like it's going to be a really interesting thing, but I think it is going to slow people down um, a lot. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I would say, I mean, I think it's a different level when you're speaking to something like that or true alcoholism, but I do think it's a time where if there are things that you can control that maybe you shouldn't be doing, now's the best time to, to start, so, <laughs> right. you know? <laughs> <laughs> totally. I, and just being careful of your vices and, and, uh, and quarantine right. is, is very, it's actually important. I mean, not to be too open about these things, but like times of high stress, I think you got to be really careful. So we're getting close to an hour here, but uh, we have a good question that could be some uh, practical mm -hmm. advice for people. And then after that, maybe if one or two people want to jump in and ask one out loud, but uh, we had a good question of just what are some of the things that you guys are doing to, to stay sane uh, during all of this? Um, so if you guys want to throw out your tips and then if anyone else in the chat wants to maybe raise their hand, I can unmute you after and you can throw out some of your tips as well. I see Drew uh, has some things else to share. <laughs> well, I'm glad. So do I, I appear sane? This is good. Because <laughs> I've, I've been in quarantine for like over three weeks now. Um, um, so for me, I think, um, you know, a lot of Matt and Jeremy, what everyone's been talking about kind of routine and that kind of stuff is important. I'll just be really specific. Um, I started doing a, uh, a dance class. Um, and that's really important. I, I don't know who knew I would like to dance, but I started um, a dance class. I found it. I literally went to, um, like, I literally went to Apple TV. I, like, opened up the app store and I, I typed in dance and something came up that said dance with Jessica. And I'm not even kidding. The next thing you know, I'm live streaming into a dance class in Tennessee with a woman um, and they, they pray every time. It's, the, it's a very interesting class and it's like, um, and it's, it almost brought back like the serendipity of the internet, like when I first started going on the internet. Um, but I love it. I like dancing um, and that's been helpful to me. Um, I like journaling in the morning. That's been really helpful to me. Um, and I, um, and I, and I, man, like human connection, calling my friends and family. Um, I don't think 
Dylan is on this, but my, my good friends sometimes call me, I'm going to get emotional again. Um, they call me when they like, when they're having dinner with their, um, their baby Rue, his name is Rue. Um, and it's just watching them. This sounds so like, um, basic, but just being able to be a part of their, you know, watching their, they're my best friends. So watching their child grow up very quickly, um, Rue's beginning to walk for the first time. And I've been able to kind of witness that over FaceTime. So, um, you know, that's been really important to me. Yeah. Um, I'll say, I mean, I'm really the lifesaver is, is working out, uh, as much as I can. I got sort of what I could off of Amazon before they stopped shipping stuff, but just the times <laughs> that I've been able to go outside and just socially distance myself and go for runs has been really amazing. I mean, generally those make me feel better, but, um, never have I just appreciated just being outside and being in the sun and going for a long run and just clearing my brain and taking my head away from everything for an hour. Uh, has been tremendously helpful. Yeah, exercise, um, getting outside, getting some sun, going for a walk, um, uh, getting on the bike, whatever it is, that's been super helpful. Um, hanging out with my son, realizing like his biggest care or worry in the world is like, you know, if he's going to get a cookie from us later. Uh, <laughs> and so that's uh, that's good. And then just like, whatever I can pour into there. I got him. Um, obviously you can tell I, I play the guitar and like guitars, but I, I got him uh, a guitar. This just arrived today. Um, it's a tiny little baby guitar and he's two and uh, are almost two. And my hope is that I can like pour some of that in. Every time he comes into this room, he, he points at the guitars and wants me to play. And so now just like giving that to him, I think is um, important to me. But it's just like, I don't know, boiling it down to figure out what's important to you and, and, and focusing on that, you know? And so it is like, it's the guitar because I love music. It's my son. It's, um, uh, I don't know, I'm going to play some video games because you know what? When I was 20 years old, I really freaking loved playing video games. And I don't care <laughs> that they're just video games, but I'll play, you know, an hour or so and enjoy the heck out of it. But it's like... Don't feel guilty about some time that you might be thinking of wasting on those things because at the end of the day, it's probably keeping you sane. Um, and just, you know, try to figure out what, what makes you happy and just focus on some of that for a little bit, whatever you can, because we're all in this together. <laughs> Actually, no, we are all completely <laughs> separated uh, by our physical uh, boundaries, but we are, we are, we're in this <laughs> spiritually together guys. Um, yeah. yeah. So we have a couple people who want to, um, jump in and respond to this question as well. I know Francis and Drew, so I'll start with you, Francis. Um, Francis, you wanted to talk uh, to this? Yeah. So, so, um, I have been working out cause I like exercising. My head is good. So I've been working out. And I think this is the time for us to regain our strength after all this hard and long work throughout the year. Although it's, it's kind of <laughs> being imprisoned in a room for a whole week or a whole month. But I think it's, it's, it's good in a way that it will help you regain your strength and, and prepare you for, for whatever that comes after quarantine, you understand? So for me, I've been working out um, with, with my, you know, working out in a gym in my room. It's, it's actually dark here, like I could have showed you around, but I've been working out a lot and, well, it's making me look like a WWE world heavyweight <laughs> champ. <laughs> it, it's That's amazing. <laughs> but, That's cool. but I think it's, 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 it's a great, it's a great time. I had, I have, I do have a, a a lot of great time being alone and being working out a lot. You understand? So I think we should all try and practice something for ourselves just to keep us busy and not to feel lonely and all those stuff. Okay. So that's my advice. Well, based on the chat room, yeah. Francis seems to be a uh, crowd favorite here. So thank you so much. Yeah, it feels as though you might have won the Zoom town hall, Francis. Yeah, for sure. Hey, thank you. Um, thank you. Um, so I know Drew wants to throw in some advice here too. Drew? Yeah, I mean, other than taking very long walks where I 
listen to podcasts. That's my catch up time on podcasts. Um, every day, I, I initially announced this on LinkedIn about a week and a half ago when I created this uh, illustration. I have every day at four o'clock, I have a quarantine. So it's a virtual tea with whoever wants to join me for tea at four o'clock. So, and you know, when you, when it talks about, you know, when it, when it comes to LinkedIn, you're talking about people who you are obviously in touch with quite a bit, former colleagues, current colleagues, and people who you probably haven't been in touch with in quite a while. But, you know, when I have this picture of this teacup that says you're invited to have a quarantine tea with me, um, I have been able to fill up my schedule just about every single day with somebody at four o'clock, some people um, not in the U.S. or different time zones. Um, and it's a great chance for us to uh, catch up. Sometimes it's total strangers um, who, you know, may have seen me in other events and they, um, they just want to get to know who I am and I want to get to know who uh, they are. And if there's some information, you know, just any kind of I'm going to say sort of networking, becoming friends, you know, connecting them with other people. Um, you know, everyone's been different. So my thing has been having these quarantines at four o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to end it soon because I, I don't want to keep people too late, but um, I want to finish. This is like very emo Laurie style, um, but just to read a, a quick sentence from something. So I've been journaling in the morning um, with something I, I wrote and then I want, um, it'll just be like a quick minute. And my friend Jackson wrote a song and I just want him to play like a snippet of it. Like even just like 30 seconds of it or a minute of it um, for you guys. And, and I, um, I'll end with something I wrote. This was my last day I was technically in quarantine. And like, man, if anyone's in quarantine, like it certainly does interesting things to your head, right? So I wrote the first day and then I wrote when I woke up on the last day. Um, you know, maybe this won't have been a bad dream, but a wake up call, bringing only the most important things to the surface and reminding us how fiercely we can love, how important human touch is, and maybe how resilient and adaptable we are as humans. So I will, in classic Lori style, leave you with something kind of emotional. Um, and I just want to say, um, you know, thank you guys all for, for joining and, um, you know, and it sounds so corny to say, but I, we all are not together uh, physically, but we all are, um, we're in this together. And, and we, um, you know, mental health, looking at issues like love, courage, anxiety, like what it means to be human during this time, I mean, is so important. So we're going to be talking a lot about it. I know some of you guys have uh, came here because you listened to First Contact, uh, our podcast, and I appreciate that. Um, and write us and talk to us. Um, I know this sounds so cheesy, but like we're listening, you know, and um, Jeremy and Matt, thank you. Um, if Thanks only you guys, me. if only you guys saw how bad my tech expert was, <laughs> how bad I was at trying to set this up before. So this wouldn't have been possible without, and we'll do these again. And um, for David, who said, keep the internet weird, I promise I will keep trying. And for the panelists, who, for someone who said in the chat, are you guys drinking more coffee? Clearly, that is a yes. Um, <laughs> thank you guys all. I want you guys all to stay human. And, and Jackson, just play a teeny bit of that song you posted, because I think it's so great. Um, I, and, then, and then we'll all say goodnight and hopefully get rest. <laughs> this is brand new, so give me some grace if I screw this up. You won't. <laughs> Maybe skies will be brighter Maybe our loads will be lighter Maybe the people that we meet Will be much happier to greet When this weary winter ends Good way to end it. Okay, guys, thank you for joining. That was awesome. And Jackson, where can people, where can people find you? Oh, um... I'm on Instagram at Jackson Q Howard and Facebook cool. also at Jackson Q Howard, Jackson awesome. Howard on everything. Cool. Thanks. All Lord. right, guys. Thank you guys so much.